So we're gonna have a little bit of fun today. We're gonna take what's in that bin back there with the skeleton hand sticking up and turn it into some Halloween decorations. And screw this vlog crap, it's making me dizzy. So this bin right here contains my Ghost of Christmas Yet to Come cosplay. You've seen in the show a couple years ago on the Christmas episode. Because of the stylized Grim Reaper, it should work great as a Halloween decoration. Now I don't wear this costume anymore because it scares the living crap out of me. Not because of the scary costume, but because I have to walk on these wooden stilts and I don't feel like breaking my ankle. So the plan for today's build is to go with a PVC structure. This thing, when I'm in this costume, I'm about seven feet tall. And then from there, I've got some scrap foam sitting around that I can use to kind of bulk out the shape a little bit. Hopefully get something that looks like kind of a creepy seven foot tall Grim Reaper I can set up on my porch for Halloween. Now this thing here was a PVC frame I built in my old apartment for having a suit of armor displayed in the apartment. Um, frankly, it's kind of flimsy and it's not gonna work too well for this case. And also it's all glued together and I need a different shape than a suit of battle armor. <laughs> Fortunately down here, I've got a lot more just extra larger, thicker PVC pipe that I'm gonna use for the frame for this build. So that's a pretty good shoulder height for this, I guess we'll call it, was he a spirit in the story, right? The ghost, whatever you wanna call him. Um, let's get a head on here, and that should put it, you know, pretty close to six and a half, seven feet tall, which is like what I said about how I stand in the costume. One piece is too long, one piece is too short. F. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna put the giant cloak on here. We'll see how things look, and then I'll go from there. So the shoulders are about the right height, but with this extra extension here, they're a little too broad for the cloak and I can't quite get it closed, so make some adjustment. Much better. So height is about right. But now, obviously, body proportions are all a little out of whack, as well as just a bunch of PVC pipes. So, let's figure out how to make that better. So here's a neat little trick for you. I've got two empty 3D printer spools. I'd probably can go ahead and screw them in place up here, and more or less get the approximate volume of a head. The mask here is actually a Nerf Rival mask, in case you ever wondered. They work pretty well for lightweight cosplay. If you want some a little bit heavier duty, you can move up to Airsoft and Paintball. I'm gonna try removing the top PLA spool and see how that changes the shape of things. Yeah, that's, that's a better fit. So let's move on to the shoulders here for a moment. What I'm gonna do is cut some curved pieces that kind of go like this, little U-shaped things, that'll kind of give the effect of the volume of some shoulders. And those pieces are gonna be made from extruded polystyrene. And one bonus feature, I cut a little key into it, this little notch sticking out here. That way I know which side is the front. So I just did something similar with the waist area, adding more of the extruded polystyrene to get a little bit of a waist going. So I've got some amount of a form filled in here with the body, but not a whole lot. I wanna get a little bit more, I guess, solid shape. So what I need to do is find a way to connect the shoulders up here 
down to the waist just to fill in the rest of the torso. So an old roll of crappy two millimeter cosplay foam. This is actually not even technically cosplay foam. You get it from the craft store. But it came in and worked pretty well to fill in the torso a bit. So now all I've got left to worry about are the arms. And I'm looking off to my collection of just random, I don't even know why I have these stuff sitting over here off the side. I got a perfect solution for the arms. All right, so the arms are in place. What I'm missing now, of course, are the 3D printed skeleton hands. <laughs> I think the bones are mostly in that box I dragged in at the start of the show. Let me find out. And what can pass was probably some sort of low budget forensic scene. Here's most of the bones of the arms and the hands. This little contraption over here made out of plexiglass, or it might be polycarbonate, I'm not really sure. Um, it was actually designed so that this hand, I could carry the sickle. I'm not going to use that for this setup. So I can take this hand off this piece and do my best to reassemble these things as mostly complete as possible. And these are, while well, I'm sitting here letting this dry, these are some old 3D printed bones I made. They're actually more or less sculpted on human hand x-rays. The proportions, the proportions are intentionally a bit off to make them more demonic, but the basic bones are there. For attaching the hands here to the arms, well, more Gorilla tape, because that's basically what's holding this whole thing together. Uh oh, don't, don't fall, don't fall. <laughs> Being the ghost of Christmas yet to come, I've got one more set of decorations to go on him right here. And within the context of the story of A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens, this guy here, well, traditionally there's actually some images of this character from back in the time when the story was first written. He's basically a really pale dude in a long black robe and over the last century and a half, he's kind of evolved to be more of the Grim Reaper type character. So this is more of a modern interpretation of the Ghost of Christmas Yet to Come. But what he does is he essentially shows Ebenezer Scrooge's future where nobody cares about him by showing him his rotting, decrepit tombstone, which I've got right here that's going to hang on him with a whole bunch of chains. The chains tying back to the first ghost that visits um, Ebenezer, Jacob Marley, and the chains he wears kind of represent all the sins he did in life. So let's get this on here, lantern and all, and we'll call this project done. This is the top of the lantern, so therefore I can get in here and we'll click on the power switch, get it facing the right way. Close it up. That's, that's about right there. And you get the nice demonic flickering light inside the lantern, even though this guy's not really a demon, he's kind of a good guy. But you know, it looks cool that way, right? <laughs> Now let me just add quickly here at this point, this lantern you see flickering here is actually a very simple Arduino project. This is something you want me to do on the channel. Put some comments down there because this is actually a great second Arduino project. We all know the first one where you blink an LED. This is just a little more complex version of that, factoring in some random elements with multiple timing loops to get more of a candlelight flicker going. Now the trick is find a way to get this thing upstairs and out to my front porch for Halloween. I'll probably leave it out there just for the night for trick-or-treaters to scare the heck out of them and see if anyone thinks it's a real person in a costume because if I position it right, it may look just like that. So yeah, anyway, I didn't actually introduce myself at the start of the video, so I'm Jason, the creator of the Tabletop Battlefield. Hit subscribe, like, all that fun stuff. If you want to see some more weird builds like this, and if you look carefully, you might have seen that super secret project I've been teasing for quite a while because it may just be in one of these camera shots. <laughs>
So with that, have a happy Halloween, everybody, and I'll see you guys next time on the Tabletop Battlefield.